This is a sample set of data, much like the one that you're going to be receiving in your Canvas um, assignment. And as usual, I like to go to data from former students. This was from a former student of mine, MJ. Uh, she is the one who was dating that other guy that I told you, Peter, the guy who uh, was into spiders a lot. So MJ was his girlfriend, uh, red hair, very smart girl, very, very strong personality. So this is the type of data that you'll be co collecting here. Here is the mass of the copper compound. Here is the mass of the dry filter paper. And this is the mass of the filter paper after we have uh, passed the uh, reaction mixture through and dried it, and that's the residue. So the first task here is to find out, well, how much copper oxide was produced in the reaction. And uh, I'm gonna use my little calculator here. So we're gonna have 1.8375, which is the final mass, minus the mass of the filter paper, 6.2, and that gives us 0 0.8375. 7213. Now, uh, if you were doing this in the lab, I would ask that you write this in pencil because this is now secondary data. Notice that the primary data was collected in ink to indicate that, you know, this is, you know, set in stone, sort of. If there had been a mistake, we would have had to cross out the uh, wrong number and fix it in there, not try to blot it out or use uh, white paper or anything like that. Now, for the purpose of this video, because of resolution, I'm going to be using a marker to write these things down, so just so it can be more easily visualized. So the mass of copper oxide product is in here, and uh, since already the column has the units in grams, I don't need to repeat the units in here. So my task now is to find out what is the percent of copper in this compound. Uh, I gave you the formulas here because at this point in the course, it may be that we haven't studied uh, the topic of stoichiometry. And so just to help you out, I have the formulas in here. So the first we're going to calculate is what, how many grams of copper are in the unknown. Remember, all of the copper in the copper oxide product has to have come from my original compound. That's because of conservation of mass. So it says here, I'm going to start out with the grams of copper oxide. So that's 0 0.7213 grams of copper oxide. And I want to find out <clears throat> how many moles of copper were recovered. <clears throat> Excuse me. So this would be, like it says here, one mole of copper oxide is 79.50 five grams of copper oxide and as your indicator here says that means the grams of copper two oxide are going to cancel out and now we're going to say that in each mole of copper two oxide there is one mole of copper and that's going to cancel out the moles of copper oxide and finally we have a molar mass of 63.55 grams of copper for every mole of copper. And I guess I kind of like allow this thing to slide a little too far. Okay, there we go. Sorry about that. So this is now going to give us the grams of copper in my original uh, compound here. So let's see what that is. Let's do the calculations. We have here the mass. I left it in the computer. I'm sorry, in the calculator. Uh, we're going to divide by 79.55. This is 1, and we're going to multiply times 63.55. And that gives us 0 0.5762. Uh, we have only four decimals allowed here for sig figs. So this is going to be 0 0.5762 grams of copper. Again, remember, the premise here is because of conservation of mass, any copper that I recovered in the form of copper 2 oxide 
must have come from my original compound. So I'm saying that my original compound in that sample, they would have been 0 0.5762 grams of copper. Now, I'm using copper. Remember, we're talking about copper ions. But don't forget, the difference in mass between an atom of copper and an uh, atom of copper 2 ion is minimal. Because remember, electrons have very, very small masses compared to the nucleus. Okay, our next equation is over here. We're going to calculate the percent mass. And I'm going to move the paper a little bit, slide it up a little bit here so we can see the rest of it. So let's see what the percent copper was. It says here we're going to use the grams of copper, 0 0.5762 grams of copper, divided by the total mass of our compound, which was 1.9778. Eight grams of compound times 100 percent. So I left my number here in the calculator. Typically we round at the end of it, so I left that in there, but I actually left it in my calculator. I'm going to divide by the total mass 1.9778 and that's going to be multiplied times 100 to get the percent and we get 29.13, we have four sig figs here, so we're going to leave it at that. So 29.13% copper. And that is the number we're going to write up here where it says percent copper. This is item number five, 29.13%. So the next step is going to have to be, let's see what were the candidates that we were given in other words, what were the possible identities of our compound? And let's see which of those would match the percent copper that we found in this experiment. Okay, now that you have determined the percent of copper in your unknown, it's time to see which one it is. If you go to page four of your handout, this is your post lab section. And you'll receive a doc file, so it's okay to write in your answers using the actual document file. That's why I crossed out this section here that said that we should have used separate paper. Now, your candidates are in here. And uh, the idea now is, based on your unknowns percent copper, which of these compounds has a similar percent copper and therefore a good candidate? for the identity of our unknown. To do this, we have to show our work, like it says here. So to find which of these guys is our possible candidate, we're going to have to determine what is the percent of copper in each one of them, okay? Now, I'm gonna do this on a separate piece of paper. Normally, this is the way we show our calculations. And your calculations sheet should be clean, should be neat. Normally, we do it in pencil. But again, because of the uh, you know, low resolution on our video, I'm doing it in markers so that it comes out a little better. I'm going to do the first one for you. You will notice that this compound is copper 2 sulfate. But this dot 5H2O means that it is a hydrate. If you look at the section in Chapter 3 of your textbook, that we skipped in lecture, there is a series of compounds called hydrates. These are compounds that when they form the crystal lattice, in, be, in there with the uh, cations and anions, there are also a set, a definite number of water molecules that are stuck in there in between the lattice of ions. And in this case, there are five water molecules for each uh, formula unit of the copper to sulfate. If you take this compound and you actually heat it gently, you can vaporize the water off and the resulting copper to sulfate is a completely different product. Actually, it loses the blue color. So let's start out by calculating what the molar mass of this compound is. And you guys should know how to do this, right? I'm gonna write down here, what are the different elements in question, copper, we have sulfur and we have oxygen. And tell you what, 
you could calculate the oxygens and hydrogens in the water molecules separately. But you know what I'm going to do? I'm going to go ahead and set it up as if it were just molecules of water. And each unit of this will have one copper, one sulfur, four oxygens as part of the sulfate ion, and then five molecules of water. We have to go to our periodic table, and I've taken the liberty here of highlighting the copper, the oxygen, and the sulfur, uh, so we can get those numbers very quickly. Let me roll it down a little bit here. Okay, there we go. So copper is 63.55. Sulfur is 32.07. Oxygen is 16.00. I know that you guys know how to do this. I'm just doing it slowly just to make sure that it gets imprinted in your minds as a skill that by this point you should be masters of. All right. Water molecules are 18.02 grams per mole each. Right. So this is here the grams per mole. And this is the number of moles of each one. So we're going to calculate that out. And I believe that we have a calculator here. I'm going to go ahead and do it here. Yeah, let me clear out what I did earlier on. So I have 63.55 of copper. I'm going to put it in my memory here. And then I have 32.07 from sulfur. Put that in my memory. I have four oxygens at 16 each. I'm going to put that in my memory. And then I have five water molecules at 18.02 each. And I'm going to put that in my memory. And so when I do my memory recall, I get a total of 249.72 grams per mole. That would be the molar mass of this compound, okay? And you'll have to do the same thing for the other two candidates. Now, let's find out what is the percent copper in this compound. So I'm going to put that over here. Notice that my format here should be kept neat, okay? This is, like I said, this is not chicken scratch. I want to keep it neat and organized so that if anybody from the outside comes in to read what I did, they can follow along fairly easily. So the percent of copper would be, again, the grams of copper. We have one unit of copper at 63.55, right? And that is grams, uh, I'm sorry, that, that is going to be moles. I'm sorry, that's going to be grams of copper in the compound divided by 200. 49.72 grams per mole of compound. Let me write that over here. Per mole of compound. Sorry for my bad handwriting, but I think you can tell what it says in there. Okay, this is times 100%, right? Want to percent it here. Let me uh, roll this a little bit so we can see it a little more thoroughly. There you go. So let's go ahead and do that. We had... Um, 63.55 divided by 249.72 grams per mole times 100 equals 25.448. But because this number here only has four sig figs, we had to round it to four sig figs. Remember that times 100 is just used to move the decimal period. So we're going to round this to... 25.45%. Okay, so those are our numbers. Let me roll this out of the way here again so we can see our post lab page. And now what you will do is on your post lab page, you're going to fill out this table. We determined that for this first compound here, the molar mass was 249.72 and the percent copper was 25.45%. And now what you will do is you'll have to do the same for both of these guys here. And uh, 
And now, based on which unknown you had and what the percent copper was for your unknown, try to see which of these three more closely matches the percent copper that your unknown had and is here. By the way, just so you know, the example that I gave you uh, previously is none of these three. It was a different experiment, different candidates. So these are the ones that you are going to have. You're going to have one of these three compounds as your unknown. Okay. Okay, students, back to our handout, which you would have downloaded earlier on. By now, you should have been able to go through the procedures, watch the video. Here is a diagram of the filter setup. And this is the data sheet that you will fill in with the data that you're provided and where you will find what is the percent copper in your own known. Don't forget, you need to display your calculations in the bottom here. And then your post lab begins on page four. These are the three candidates uh, for the identity of your unknown. Make sure you fill in this table and identify your unknown. Don't forget to put in what your unknown number is. And don't forget that there needs to be a separate paper where you show your calculations of the numbers that you use to fill this table here. Okay. Notice that there are two more post lab questions. Question number two is a good practice given the percent composition of three different compounds, find the empirical formula. We have done this in class, so it's just a matter of practicing. And question number three is a similar experiment to the one that we had here. A student made a compound of sulfur and copper, and now she needs to find, is the product a copper one sulfide or is it copper two sulfide? So based on the data given, based on what you determine to be the formulas of these two candidates and their respective uh, values for the percent copper, let's see if you can identify which of the two was the compound that the student synthesized. That is it. Please make sure that you have done all this work by the due date. Don't forget that any assignment that is submitted after the due date is assessed a certain deduction okay so please be on top of this thank you so much i hope you enjoyed this and if you have any questions do not hesitate to contact me thank you so much